Thanks for clicking in. With almost a month creeping by since the historic July 3rd poll, the Election Commission has finally endorsed enough MPs required by law to commence a new house session that will see the Thaksin camp taking the country's reins for the fourth time. Let's go straight into the front page headlines. Komchat Luk shouts, EC endorses more than 90% of MPs. Chatupon not yet endorsed. Pontiwa Natwood endorsed. Parliament commences August 1st. Ying luck to be voted in as PM on August 10. Well, according to Thai newspapers, Ying luck's first mission must be to tackle none other than the controversial 300 baht minimum wage election campaigns promise, which is giving many companies, hotels, and investors more than just a headache. Ying Lak will have to decide whether to implement the wage level immediately across the country or opt for zoning. Yesterday, Jaran Pokapan Group, or CP, came out in support of the 300 bar daily wage policy. Not surprising, as big boss Tan Nin Jeravanon three years ago proposed an economic theory called Two Highs, which he believes will steer the economy towards prosperity. His theory is high prices with high incomes, meaning increase the price of rice and also increase salaries. Today, more large conglomerates are supporting the belief that high purchasing power will of course fuel economic growth. The theory might be believable, but the new government must also come up with measures to ensure that no traders or businesses take advantage of the situation to pocket more profits at the expense of the common man. Meanwhile, Matichon's headlines blare out. Opposite puts a break on egg price rise, tells poor Thai to come clean over wage policy. Sayam Simen embraces 300 baht wage. All good. But without concrete or strict supporting measures, the 300 bar daily wage will create more negative than positive effects to the economy. Already, opposite has to tell egg traders and producers they cannot add future labor costs into the price of eggs. And, as you know, CP is heavily involved in the eggs business. But yesterday it was CP that said the rich have to accept that it's time they sacrifice for the poor. Let's go over to the helicopter controversy. Well, Army Chief Prayutjan Ocha must be disappointed. See what Matichon says. Opposite Ying Lak put brakes on planned purchase of 30 choppers. Opposite tells the army not to use sentiment but sense what is important. Ying Lak says her priority it to solve the public plight first. Both Matichon and Tyrat newspapers run pictures showing a Huey chopper which was forced to make an emergency landing in Udon Thani. This comes on the heels of three helicopter crashes in nine days with a loss of 17 lives. We can only hope there are no more chopper tragedies. The Thai Post, meanwhile, runs an alarming special report by Prasan Maluk Kapitak entitled Land Reclamation of 300,000 Right, Disaster on Land and Catastrophe in Water. The article unlocks the mystery of where Pua Thai is going to find hard cash to fund its grand populist policies apart from its controversial lottery scheme. Prasan plainly says the Pua Thai policies written by the man with a Montenegrin passport and residing in Dubai aims to make a whopping 2 trillion baht profit from selling land that is created from reclamation after constructing a 30 km long dam from Samut Sakon to Samut Prakan 10 km into the sea. Well, Seeing how Dubai has turned its Palm Island project into a luxury housing estate, hotels and department stores, it looks like the individual Prasan is referring to is going to follow in that country's footsteps. But listen to this, writer Prasan says, 
Dubai's Palm Island is now in a coma as 300 islands are sinking because of sea erosion. Besides, Thailand's marine ecology is totally opposite of the desert Dubai's ecology system. The Thai project, he insists, will create nothing short of a catastrophe for the marine environment in the Gulf of Thailand. Before we go, here are a sampling of newspapers that featured the passing of Princess Petrarat on their front pages. The princess, aged 85, was the only child of King Rama VI. The Royal Household Bureau reported that she died of a blood infection. That's it folks. Bye.